Hey, hey, Tony Gaston here just popping in. I figure I'll sit here and get my little work done in the car. Shoot me a little video, just dropping my son off at training. So we over here in Manchester. You you can see the field out there. And um so you can't really see the field, but out here just dropping them off. And this right here is something that I'm I'm doing for my son to come from the USA and fly to another continent and then come to the toughest place to play football, which is England, where the best football is played, which we call soccer in the States, but it's football. And to give him that challenge, cause that's what he asked for. So I reached out and made some connections and with the favor of God, was able to make it happen and he getting he getting what he asked for <laughs> it's a it's a challenge but i wanted to pop on here and it was something i was thinking on about the how did she get married and this will be part three and i want women to understand something and this is really this really going out to the women who are what they call my wife taught me this word because she said that's what she was called in high school is prude and just really going out to the women who are seen as conservative if prude was a word that was used uh, goody two shoes just really never done much and didn't really know much weren't really taught much it's not necessarily for the women who you know lost their virginity at a young age like willingly not talking about other circumstances but one of the things that happens with men and a lot of times and we all know this but we don't think about it we don't we don't really think about it especially the type of women that I typically coach, you know, I coach different types, but the, the main type of women that I end up coaching are along the same lines of just, you know, good women who good intentions, good women, and may not really understand men that much. One of the things I want you to realize is how the brain works in a man. And the reason why so many men are addicted to pornography, which basically means an addiction to masturbation, is because of the release from the brain that a man gets. And it's a lot more instant. So... What I read once is that it takes a woman on average 13 to 40 minutes to have a release. And I'm sure there's probably have been women who have learned their own body and are able to bring about a release sooner than that, you know, quicker than that. But for a man, we can bring about a release in our body in 30 seconds. And when a man lays down with a woman, it can be before he even in the woman, he can have a release. As soon as it touched the woman, he could have a release. And that's not the same for 99.9% .9 of women. Most women, studies show most women have not, do not have a release during intercourse. So that just helps you understand. And we're not talking about the exceptions to the rule. To those of y'all who are new here, we don't focus on the exception to the rule. We talk about the rule. We talk about the majority. Y'all, please stay out the comments if you're new. Read the room. Learn about the channel and what we be doing over here and touch your nose. Thank you. And so when you think about this, a lot of times... There are women who do not enjoy, per se, 
that part of a relationship, the intercourse and all of that. And it ain't nothing wrong with that. But I, I've been noticing and I've been seeing it more and more and more on like trends of women stating this and reinforcing this and promoting this. And they promoting that they're not really into intercourse. I seen yes, yesterday a very pretty lady and her husband was posting the video and, and he put the title, why my wife won't let me get her a massage. And she was saying her back hurt and her back still hurting. And he was like, well, I give you a massage. You want a massage? She was like, no. He was like, why I can't give you no massage? She was like, because you never only want a massage. And so, but what that was saying, as, as innocent as it was, what it was saying is, she was saying, I just want a massage. But to a man, we look at it like, how could you only want a massage? Like, why you don't want to end that massage with no good uh-uh? Like, that don't... And I, and I do recall as a man, as being a husband, offering a massage, and before the massage even got to going, what the... I want to get up. And my wife would be looking mad. Like, like, hold on. Now, you really thought all I want to do is a massage? And so, what I start to do is, just to really, just to see, I would just give my wife a massage. And just to see if after that massage, that was going to turn her on, get her ready. In the middle of the massage, she knocked out sleep. In the end of the massage, I'm talking about, I'm in there like the arm and hammer box. You know the arm and hammer box with that fish like that. I'm in there like the arm and hammer box at the end of that massage. I'm, I am ready. And she just, just a cozy. And I, and, I, and I just say, all right, go ahead, get some rest. My head about to explode. Head about to explode. Both of them about to explode. Go get some rest. She went, okay, all right. Roll right on over, went to sleep. So, but one thing that she taught me as well, though, okay, buddy eating now. Buddy eating, all right. It's another dad here and brought his son to trial, and he in a Nice BMW. Everybody drive BMWs and Benz is over here. Not everybody, literally, but it's a lot of them. And my son was telling me, he was like, Dad, it's like in-state tuition and out-of-state tuition. He was like, the car's made over here, so they more affordable for them. So I'm like, well, he ain't like that in America. And so I've learned this firsthand, but this also from being a marriage coach and from talking to thousands of women and thousands of men and going around the world, one of the things I have realized, and we all know this, this is not a secret, is that in marriage, typically sex decreases. And that is for a whole bunch of reasons. Every couple may have their own reasons, but it decreases. So this is not about not just how she got married, but how she stayed married. The woman who understands the power of a release in a man's brain, she gonna have a superpower. And when a woman understand that this release can happen in 30 seconds and that that release may be from her hand or whatever, that is a drug. And a lot of women don't understand that because a lot of women expect for sex to mean the same thing for them that it do for the man, or they expect for it to mean the same thing to the man. So a lot of women don't understand that in marriage, there will be times that sex is a chore 
And it's no different to the man than him doing what he sees as a chore. So if a man get up and he go to work, he see that as a necessity. He sees that as his job. But when it comes down to a chore like washing the dishes or doing laundry, a lot of women look at that and be like, that ain't no chore. That's what you supposed to do. That's what you supposed to do. You supposed to want to do that. This your house too. And it don't make no sense to a woman how a man could complain about taking care of his own house. Or sitting and playing with the kids for an hour. For a lot of women, that's completely foreign. And this is where we argue at. But see, this what I'm trying to tell you is like, say the drama for your mama and allow me to help you understand something about men and you just deal with it internally instead of arguing about it and combating it, seek to understand, then be understood. And this is going to help you with your understanding. So the reason why the Bible say a man can't deny a woman his body, nor can a woman deny a man her body. And my wife, she embodied that scripture to the point to where if I'm feeling like it and she not feeling like it, she still will come together. And that's where I learned firsthand where, man, this guy flying. Like, what you doing, bro? Wow. What is you doing, bro? He just flying through the parking lot. And, and vice versa. I learned firsthand because it would be times to where, you know, she in the mood for intimacy and I'm tired. I got a headache. And, and then I got to go doing a motivational speech. Internally, I got to do a motivational speech. All right, now. Come on, now. All right, now, little Justin. Come on, now, little Justin. Hey, but wake up, now. Hey, wake up. You got to go, now. Hey. Come on now. You got to go. And I got to do a motivational speech. And turn it on. But that is, that's a superpower. When you get to that place to where you understand each other. And you understand when that is a necessity for your spouse. And you get out your feelings. And you get out of. Your headache, your stomach ache, your tiredness, and you realize that this is a moment. It ain't going to last long. Three, four, five minutes, and my spouse is pleased with the connection, with the intimacy, and I could go on about the rest of my day, and my life ain't over. And we don't even feel like doing that sometimes, but the body have a release. When it's somebody that you love, the mind have a release even if your body don't have a release. Because that closeness and that intimacy releases oxytocin from the brain, whether you want it to or not. It, you get a release. And I have witnessed that even in my own marriage. And so this is why, this is why, this is why. Get, get, get right here, why not? Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you. Now, to the Christians who is abstinent, this don't apply to you. I'm not saying to you, that you need to be giving your boyfriend a release. Now, you still going to give him a release, but you have to be creative with the release. And this is what I mean by that. A man get the same release from watching his favorite sport and eating his favorite food. Not, not the actual physical release. I ain't talking about his thing 
having a release. I'm talking about his brain having a release, which is the brain is the largest sexual organ. So his brain releases this serotonin, this dopamine, this oxytocin when he watching a sport he love or watching a show he love, a movie he love, when he doing something he love. So for the Christian women, you learn your man mind and you learn him. And if you know he love American football, every Sunday and Saturday and Sunday, you get ready for the game. And you become a part of the game. Like his favorite team, get you a jersey. Get you a jersey. And every time that team finna play, put the, a schedule on your phone. And you get you a jersey. And then on one of them games, you get y'all tickets to the game. I'm talking about good tickets. Do not waste your time and your money to get no nosebleed seats now. Get some real seats in a good area, maybe get the club level, search for the club level on there to where you get to be inside and you get to eat food. Then you get to go outside and sit under the overhang and watch the game. So you're not too much in the elements and use connections, you know, reach out, go to the website of the arena of the stadium and you can reach out to their ticket people right there and you could talk to them on the phone and get the best tickets right from the source. And this how you give him his release. And then if he just want to watch the game, if he just want to go with his homeboys, let him go with his homeboys. Let him go to Buffalo Wild Wings. If he say, hey, you want to come? Do not say, no, I got to go. With my, don't do not say, no, I'm, I'm OK. I, I'll go. I, um, I'm going to hang with my mom today or I'm going to hang with my friend. Do not do that. If a man invite you, to his favorite thing, he love you. And he wants to spend that time with you. He wants you to love what he love. And this is these are the women that get married. The ones who are selfless and not selfish. There are so many women who only want to do what they want to do. And when the man want to play his video game, they want to cry and complain. When he want to watch football, they want to cry and complain. And then when he want them to do it, like you might have a man who like video games. Video games literally release healing chemicals into the body. I hate video games. I tried to study and read about them, trying to find something negative about them. And I could find nothing negative about video games. All the doctors said that video games are healthy for kids. All the doctors said they're healthy for the brain. They're healthy for cognitive they healthy for learning. They healthy for this. They help. I was like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? The only thing is like gamer brain, but they haven't really did too many studies on it. And that's like when somebody just be on the game eight hours a day and they don't shower, they forget to eat and all of that. That's when it's dangerous. But like four hours or less is a normal gaming period. Like four hours, even though it sounds like a lot, that's a normal gaming period. So if your man say, hey, you want to play the game with me? Okay, I'll try it. Sit down there and try to learn how to play that game. When you can get into, the reason how I could tell you that Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk is one of the best foundations out there is because I pay attention to my wife and I get into what she like. The reason why I stop women and ask them this later today, me and my son was at the coffee machine. And I said, excuse me, ma'am. She turned around and she was like. She was, she did not want to be bothered. I said, um, excuse me, what, what, what kind of jacket is that? What, what, what brand is that? She said, yesterday, you said you like my pants. And I did not remember. I ain't remember, I ain't remember her because I wasn't looking at her. I seen the pants because my wife in the fashion. So I'm always now because of me becoming interested in what she interested in. I'm paying attention to all the pants and I will literally Google image. I take a picture 
and put it in Google Images and bring up them pants or bring up that jacket to order it for my wife. So what I'm finna do now, the lady said come from Zara. And I say, Zara in Manchester? She said, yeah. She said, but I think it's last season. I said, okay. And, and she was like, I said, yeah, my wife is really in the fashion. Just to let her know, child, I ain't trying to hit on you now. Don't get beside yourself now. I'm standing here with my child. They, don't get beside yourself. And so listen, when you become interested in what your man is interested in, you giving him a release. And this is what I was, I'm going to go back to what I was going to say. Okay, all right, sister, sister, driver, hold M class BMW. Old sport. Old speedster. Okay. All right. She, 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 she finna turn that sport mode on too. She can turn that sport mode on. What else? A M3. It's an I4. M. All right. She older too. Something in her 60s. Got a old race car. God bless them. Keep us safe. And so what I was going to say is this to the women who you classy, you smart, and you ambitious, and you single. And you look at this woman who she is what you call, and I ain't saying this about her. You said it about her. You call her a bimbo. Get your life together. You call her a bimbo. Okay, they driving a Jeep. That's an American car, but with the but with the wheel on that side. So Jeep over here, okay. You call her a bimbo. You call her a airhead. You call that woman a dumb blonde. You know what you call that woman. But see, listen. She married. And you're like, how is she married? Now, the non-Christian, the woman who ain't living right, she married, the airheaded one now, she married because of the amount of releases she gave him. She gave this man one to three releases a day. She, she used her mouth in the morning, her hand in the afternoon, and Vijay at night. And that man ain't know what hit him. That man got hit by a Mack truck. And then she stacked the releases. Because not only do she in the morning. Then she get him an omelet. With cheese and bacon. So now he just had a release. Now that omelet and cheese and bacon hit his mouth. <laughs> he have another release. Then she iron his shirt. <laughs> he have another release. And she pack his lunch. <clears throat> he just having so many releases. He like. <laughs> and then she be at home talk. She be at home talking to her ex-boyfriend, sending him news. But the man she with. Got a bag on him. Her ex got a meat leg on him. Meaning he put that thing down on him. Y'all got to forgive me stirring up all this linen here. He put that thing down on him. Uh. And so she's still ichmatized from that ex. So she's a cheater. But she understands the science. And that's why she married. So the thing about it is when you a good woman, when you a classy woman, and this is what I try to tell my son, even with, with soccer, I say, learn something from everybody. You look at everybody's strength and you pull that for them. So don't say, oh, I'm a good woman. I'm not going to be doing all of that, doing all of that. No, as a good woman, you learn what release you can give your man if you're not married, okay, boom, he love the golf. I'm finna, I'm finna book him a day at the golf course. And boom, and then if he don't invite you, cool, let him go. Let him go with a homeboy. Book it for him and somebody else. Book a night, book his birthday party at Top Golf. He love the golf. Boom, 
He loved NBA. Boom, I'm finna get us some tickets. Get in the lower bowl. You don't got to get it. You don't got to get it um, in courtside because it's super expensive. And the cheat code is to buy it day of. So just know a day that he got free. Like ain't no games coming on or his favorite team coming on. But he don't know that because y'all live in that city that y'all could get to the game. And then boom, uh, the day of like four hours before the game, go to Ticketmaster and type in the team name. And then type in best seats and the the, the good seats going to be cheap. And then boom, grab your two of them. The fees be crazy. It's, a, it's an investment, so you don't do it all the time. Like once, twice a year. And like, and it could be a birthday or something like that if it's in the season. And then boom, boom. Hey, we going. I got a ticket to the game. Nah, if he say, no, nah, I don't want to go, I can't go, break up with him. Break up with he trash. He cheating on you. <laughs> I ain't being serious now. If he got a real headache, real stomachache, something like that. But most men ain't going to turn that down, though. Not going to turn that down. Hey, got a two tickets to the game. Boom, let go. When I tell you that man is rocked up in them pants and he just releasing all down that leg. Not not literally. But that's what I mean. It's the same thing as that loose woman giving him a real release. And this is what I want women to understand. You got to understand the science. You got to understand the brain. You got to understand that this is, you got to understand that this is how a man get the here release. This is how a man fall in love. So it's like if you learn his favorite sandwich is egg, cheese, bacon, or avocado toast, then boom, you hit him with that. Just out the blue, boom, here you go, boom. Favorite dinner is this right here, boom. And I know some of y'all going to say, we supposed to be cooking for a boy, man. No, you don't got to cook for him every day, but it might be something you do once a week. because Especially if you're not having sex. Now, see, it's okay because, see, a lot of women having sex with their boyfriend. But if you was a devout Christian and you're not having sex, then you have to give him a release other ways. So through his favorite outing, like his favorite thing to do or his favorite food, you give him a release that way to make up because you're not having sex and he's not going to look down on you because he getting something from you, which says to him, you care, you love him. You're into him. You can't go into it. So selfish minded to where you say, I'm not having sex, but I'm also never going to cook for a boyfriend. I'm also never going to clean or I'm never going to do his laundry or I'm never going to take him to no game. I'm never spending a dime. You can't take that approach. You can't be selfish. You still have to be a giver. It don't mean you do it every single day. It don't mean you go broke. Like my wife bought my first pair of work boots when I was going to work at the warehouse. I ain't had no money. She bought my steel toe boots. My wife, one time I asked her just to see where her heart was. I said, will you give me some Air Force One? She bought me some Air Force One. That's the only two things I really remember her buying me. But it showed me that she not selfish. And then when we got married, anytime something would come up, like my birthday or something, she would go get me a dope Muskeen outfit. Muskeen was the brand that was in the little original painted stuff. She will get me a dope Muskeen outfit. And just to show me, like, I love you and I'm here for you, too. I'm not just a taker. And that's a, it's a fine line now. Some women go overboard and they get to a desperate level. But you got to sprinkle it. You got to sprinkle it. And so understand the power of the release and understand that if you marry and you want to stay married, now you could master all the releases. If you a girlfriend and you saving yourself until marriage, then you got to you got to master the other releases that he want and need. For me, I'm going to tell you like my type is would be going to the movie. I love going to the movie. I don't golf. I don't like video games. I'm in the sports, but I ain't not, I'm not crazy about it. Even though I'm an athlete, I ain't crazy about it. But I like, you know, traveling and going to the movie. So learn your man and what he like to do. And don't assume every man like sports or every man like golfing or every man like baseball or every man like food. Learn your man. And then you master that release. And when you master that release, you're going to notice that if this is your husband, he going to master your release. 
And we ain't talking sexual. Now, when you married, we talking sexual too. And he gonna master your release. Hey, Tony Gasson here. God bless you. We'll talk soon.